All right. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to the Rancher Lab session. I was a little worried because in the, uh, 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 you know, in the in the session guide, they just said Rancher Labs. Didn't say what we're going to talk about. So I hope I hope you know we're going to talk about containers. Uh, were any of you at the uh, any of you at the uh, uh, keynote yesterday? The the, the 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 technical keynote. Yeah, it was fantastic. Right. I really like it because. It was about containers, I and mean, so many container technologies got, got shown. And indeed, uh, Docker containers adoption is really, really uh, gone through the roof. And I, I believe that's going to really present a lot of great opportunity for, for the cloud, and especially for you know, folks who are out there building and using OpenStack Cloud. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to talk about how, um, how technologies like Rancher could help you run Docker better on OpenStack. Um, containers are loved by developers, but more importantly, they're actually changing how the notion of application management is. Now, speaking of application management, you might think about ideas like application blueprinting, or you know, a lot of uh, pioneers in the space, uh, folk, you know, or or established practices like OpenStack Heat or you know, AWS CloudFormation or RightScale. But Docker at the container level really uh, captured some of the essence of application management in a very clean and succinct way. So, uh, by the way, this is not the only way to manage applications in Docker, but this is one of the uh, popular ways. Uh, you can use something called Docker Compose uh, template, and you can see here it's so obvious what the op application does, right? It, uh, it describes four services. One is a load balancer service, then a web service, a zookeeper locking service, and a database service. And it also indicates how these services are linked together. And really, with a with a with a, with a with a type of a click of a button or or a simple command, developer can instantiate uh, you know this Docker Compose template uh, on their laptop or or in a cloud instance. That's why it's 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 it's, it's so powerful. Um, Rancher, uh, which is the uh, product our company ships, is a Docker management platform for operating uh, containers at scale. I already showed you at the previous slide, you know, on an individual machine, developers can already create containers or create an app. But what happens when you have uh, dozens of servers, hundreds of servers, you have servers that span across multiple clouds, perhaps. So this is where uh, Rancher comes in. Rancher has two parts of Rancher. One part is what we call infrastructure backplane. And that's very important because as you know, Docker is a completely consistent and portable application packaging and distribution format and, and a runtime environment for, uh, for, for your applications. But the problem is, as you run Docker on different types of backend, you would see many different kinds of infrastructure. I mean, for example, if you run it on Amazon, you see things like EBS, you think, see things like ELB, you see security groups. You see VPC, now you run it on OpenStack, you just see something quite different. They're similar, but semantically they're not exactly the same. I mean, you, you, you know, you, 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 you see the Neutron adapter, you see OpenStack's notion of what a virtual network is, you see OpenStack load balancer as a service, and, and, and perhaps other you know, OpenStack security concepts as well. Then, then imagine if you move the same workload now to, say, a VMware cluster, or, or more, uh, more and more um, uh, popular these days is people simply run some of these things on, on, ba uh, on bare metal instances, probably uh, provisioned through Ironic. Then what happens is they really don't see much uh, infrastructure support from the, from the platform at all. So what Rancher does is it creates a consistent set of infrastructure, regardless where you're Docker containers will run, so Docker containers will be truly portable. Then with the uh, consistent infrastructure, we can run a set of uh, application services, and we can support different ways of managing applications on the Docker platform. And, and as, as I uh, mentioned earlier, Docker Compose is, a, is a quite a popular way today. It's really gaining popularity, but it's relatively new. Um, most uh, Docker users still manage apps on Docker directly, meaning they just go 
you know, they just go run scripts or type commands like Docker run a container. And that's, that's literally how majority of the apps on Docker are managed today. And, and coming down the line, even newer technology like Kubernetes, uh, championed by Google, those will be even more advanced ways of running uh, applications. And, and Rancher then will be a platform that all of these different kinds of application management frameworks will just run seamlessly, regardless of what infrastructure you run on, what cloud you run on. Uh, so dive a little bit deeper into infrastructure backplane. Uh, what we do is we essentially take bare minimum resource from each cloud. I mean, remember earlier I said different clouds provide resources in very different way. So one way to do that is you can try to abstract, you can try to do lowest common denominator, but that's, that, that's not a very good experience. So what we do is we instead take some very basic computing elements from each cloud, meaning a, a Linux server running Docker with some CPU memory, some local disk SSD resource, and network connectivity. So every cloud can do that uh, without any exception. And it doesn't really matter what technology you, in, you, you use to implement these clouds. Then a rancher would lay on our own implementation of SDN, load balancer, which is implemented using containers, our service discovery mechanism. Uh, service discovery, for those of you who haven't heard, you know, coming from a cloud background, it is basically the equivalent of, of really a, a load balancer. Load balancer is something you would use to make a service available on the internet. Service discovery, by pro through, usually through programming the DNS is what you would use to make a service available internally because you don't really need a load balancer. You don't need all the clients to actually go connect to a single IP address. So you, as long as you have a wrong robin DNS, you can set up uh, service discovery for all your internal microservices. We also do health checking, uh, this integral part of the a rancher platform of all your containers and services. Finally, we do a, a storage management. So today, Docker is primarily used for stateless apps that, that, that can be destroyed and recreated very quickly. But, go, but there's certainly been a lot of interest in doing stateful apps as well. And Rancher provides a, a simple abstraction and implementation of uh, Docker volume snapshot and backup in very much the same way as actually as how OpenStack does it today. Um, now you have uh, the, the, the infrastructure back plan set up. Uh, then we can, we can do uh, uh, some application services. We can start managing the app. And I'm just going to use Docker Compose as an example. Actually, the Kubernetes experience will be very similar to this. And, and the direct management through native Docker experience um, it, 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 it is actually similar to this as well. But I'm going to use doc the earlier Docker Compose example. And what, you know, what Rancher does is we're going to be able to deploy this app on any infrastructure, regardless what, what cloud they run on. So you may start with something small, and through Rancher, we could, we could then configure it. The very first thing, even before you deliver, uh, you deploy, is you want to make sure the actual uh, template is configured specifically for your environment. And it's a big problem, because traditionally, that's the kind of stuff people will use uh, Chef and Puppet for, and you could still use it to do that, but if you decided to you know, adopt Docker Compose, then we need a way to inject these configuration variables and secrets so that the same template could be deployed in many different environments many times. Then after you deploy it, as the traffic comes, you might want to scale them up. Uh, you want to perform health checks, or Rancher let you define health check rules, and if something breaks, uh, Rancher would make sure that uh, a new container started up, and, uh, and the overall status is still green. Then finally, it's upgrade. Um, upgrade is, is, is really microservice upgrade. If you actually do it with containers, you never really want to go back again. It's so simple, so convenient. All really you have to do is create a new instance of the service, and rewire some of the internal service discovery mechanisms. And when everything is unit tested, up and running, then you redirect the front end load balancer over. Then you can delete the old service. Of course, you can keep the old service around in case you want to roll back. So, so that is a very simple uh, microservices based uh, uh, you know, uh, full application lifecycle management. And, 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 and that's what uh, Rancher together with Docker Compose can deliver. Uh, finally, the last piece of, uh, of capability that Rancher has, besides the infrastructure service and application services, we got to integrate uh, you know, with, with, with a set of user databases as well as DevOps services 
and different kinds of Docker can, uh, registry, different kinds of places you would put your Docker images uh, that you use in the company. Uh, so a common use case for, for Rancher, for example, is CI CD. Uh, what people would do is they would, uh, Jenkins up there would actually check out the code from GitHub and they would build the artifacts. Then Jenkins would actually um, uh, call, invoke some of its scripts to get the uh, a CI scripts started and the CI scripts will run on a Rancher cluster. So that's a, that's a pretty typical use case. And then that's the CI part. Then when it comes to CD, usually, uh, usually the CD uh, continuous delivery is not done Automatically, usually an admin will come in and through, you know, through some commands or through some UI, then uh, he will go through the upgrade process I, as I showed you on the previous slide. So, uh, so Rancher is, a, uh, is, you know, is, a, is an open source project and I'm just going to show you quickly in the remaining, uh, remaining minutes what it actually looks like. Um, this is a uh, th this is a actually a a, a, a quick view a, a host view of of, ran uh, of Rancho. I've got actually three hosts already added into my cluster. Uh, a lot of these small blocks that's running they are actually Docker containers. So I've got a number of Docker containers already running, and I'm going to show you what these containers actually do in a minute. Adding hosts is actually very easy. Uh, when you click add hosts. Um, Rancher gives you a set of options, so you can uh, you can directly add hosts uh, from a, a group of cloud providers. They could be you know any kind of cloud provider. Rackspace so happens to be a uh, an op uh, a provider that uh, uses OpenStack, but you know you can you can add hosts for DigitalOcean or Amazon EC2 as well. A lot of times, what people do is they don't even bother to go through this type of experience. It's actually uh, for a lot of our users, it's a lot easier to use their existing scripts to to get a. Uh, a cloud-hosted virtual machine, of, or or even uh, their self-hosted physical machine started, and then you uh, get Docker, in, Docker and Linux installed on there, and simply run this command to get, um, uh, you know, to get the agent to get this host registered into Rancher. So once you got uh, got it. Uh, uh, re Registered into Rancher, you can start doing things on these hosts. You can manually add the uh, you can manually add the container. So I'm not a, I'm not going to go into that. You know, you select name and you can configure advanced options, or you can um, or you can manage some of the uh, containers we've already uh, we've already started. So we, you know, obviously we let you do. Uh, you know, if you guys have done, and this is kind of like Horizon, except you know we're doing it to, to to containers instead of virtual machines. But you know, there's some unique capabilities of containers. Containers is more app oriented. You can actually look at the logs that spewed out from the app that's running inside the container. Uh, we we uh, very much like you know like a virtual machine. Uh, containers uh, you, we we can in, in, enable you to actually SSH in into a container and you see containers are pretty clean like it's unlike a virtual machine where you probably get three screenfuls of processes running containers you'll see no more than a handful of processes running really a, a well crafted container should probably only have one process running you know the pid one should be just the application itself um, so you've got you know you can of course start to directly manage your application this way through the rancher ui but we also support managing apps through uh, uh, through by specifying uh, a, a Docker Compose templates. Here I've got a WordPress uh, application already deployed. These are the two services that I have. And if you, you know, I'm, I'm again, uh, I'm not going to go into details of this. Here you see the the actual uh, the load balancer for WordPress and WordPress, the actual Docker Compose files that we are. Uh, we use to, to, to even to, to actually get this deployment going, and on the right hand side are some of the additional arguments that Rancher has to specify to make sure this application is production ready. So, um, so with that, I'm gonna just uh, uh, put up the uh, uh, like I said, this is a open source project. All uh, all of our code is on on GitHub, and please uh, check us out. We have a. Uh, we, we have two projects. One is Rancho, which I talked about. Another project is called the Rancho OS that I don't really have time to get into it, uh, but you're welcome to check that out as well. Uh, I think both are really exciting. If you're, if you're interested in running Docker on OpenStack, uh, check these projects out. Thank you.